at least there, what's nice is it's not just for PvE or PvP. It, it'll be useful on both sets of gear, so it sort of brings the gear together. Uh, but short answer is, you know, we are going to continue to look at perks. Our goal is not to have one that clearly outshines others. Welcome to Forge in Eternum, where we talk about all things New World. Today we have an episode of Balance of Power. Uh, we are filming this very soon after the PTR launched, so we don't yet have enough uh, info and data uh, to really talk about balance too much. So we are looking at it. I think you know we're carefully examining artifact power, which ones are too strong, which ones are too weak. Uh, the attribute threshold bonus is another area we're looking at. Uh, some of the new perks, old perks, are they all balanced? Uh, and there's one potion that might be a little overpowered. I think you'll know what I mean if you've been in the PTR. Uh, so we're looking at those things, but not enough concrete uh, sort of data to make decisions yet on. So instead, what I thought we'd do today is do a little bit of a follow-up on gear. Uh, we did a deep dive last balance of power, and there were a couple follow-up questions that I wanted to answer. So I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Lovin to ask the questions. How do I get a gear score 700 as a PvE player? Perfect. So let's talk about the gearing journey as a PvE player. I think the first thing you'll want to do is the Elysian Wilds MSQ, the main story quest line. Uh, depending on you know, how much you explore and if you do side quests and, or if you just rush through it, you're going to end up somewhere, let's say, gear score 640 to maybe uh, 650 at the end of that. Maybe even a touch higher if you really spend some time exploring. Uh, so at about 650 to 640, you're now available to sort of start end game content. Uh, so what that means is a PVE player is you'll probably start doing some of the base level expeditions. Uh, these are, you know, what we're now calling almost story mode expeditions. We've really made them easy. We want all people to be able to experience them. It's sort of your on ramp to all to end game. Uh, those will drop gear that caps up to 685. So they'll give you a nice way towards that 700 goal. They're really a, a great first on ramp. Uh, after that, there's a couple of options. Uh, one is you can do open world content. Uh, open world drops depend on the difficulty of the enemy. So if you go to the hardest elite content with high level enemies, uh, you can get drops off normal enemies up to 690. Uh, and uh, the named enemies in chests will drop up to 700. So that's, that's a great thing to do. Uh, mutations are a great way to get 700 gear. Uh, any mutation level can drop up to 700. The minimum level increases as you go higher and higher. So there's less, there's more of a chance, sorry, as you go up the mutation scale uh, to really get that end with M3 dropping 695 to 700. So you can really uh, just sort of finalize that fat final bit of gear score. Uh, lastly, don't forget Corrupted Portals. Uh, they give you caches and those can uh, drop up to 700 also. So how do I get gear score 700 as a PvP player? Yeah, so your experience as a PvP player, we want to keep very focused just on doing PvP content because that's what that's what PvP is like. Uh, so one of the main ways is to continue doing uh, arenas and OPRs. The caches in there can drop up to 700 gear score items. Uh, you know, the range is somewhat wide, so it's not going to be every game you're getting 700, but you can get them. So uh, continue to do the content you'll love and you'll get there. Uh, in addition, don't sleep on the new influence uh, V2 mechanics that we're adding in Season 3. Uh, you do get a cache at the end of every race, uh, and you get a ton of salt and XP. So we want these to be very rewarding regardless of whether you're interested in the race or not. It's just a good activity to do. Uh, those caches will also drop up to 700. Uh, and also, the PvP reward track is a great source of gear. Uh, it'll continue to drop named items, which will be a great way uh, to get great gear. Uh, and every 10 levels, you're going to get a guaranteed 690. Uh, another important thing to note is that the named items, uh, like all named items, will be able to be upgraded to 700 uh, with the appropriate matrix upgrading. All right. Uh, and then how about gear score 700 as a crafter? Uh, crafters have two main ways to get to gear score 700. Uh, the first one is prismatic scarab crafting. Uh, this is the slightly more expensive way. Uh, you know, it is on a weekly cooldown. It's definitely more expensive. Uh, but it, what it does is it guarantees you 700 gear score and it guarantees you the exact perks uh, you want. All three perks can be determined by the player. Uh, the other alternative is the chromatic seal uh, crafting. Uh, that is definitely a, a cheaper option and is on a daily cooldown. 
but it only guarantees you two perks. Uh, so that third perk will be random. So it's a little bit more of a, a higher risk, but it's a lower cost. Uh, another important thing to remember as crafters is, uh, you know, there's lots of new options to re-roll uh, the third perk with named items uh, and with artifacts. So those will be another great avenue for crafters. All right, um, I have a question for, that I elicited uh, on Reddit here. Um, question regarding craft mods for perks that are being removed. What will happen to existing mods for perks such as refreshing ward and siphoning? Will these mods still be in our storages but unable to craft with? Will we be able to convert them as with umbral shards? Uh, you will be able to convert them as with umbral shards, but rather than go converting into coin, uh, they'll convert into attribute mods. Okay, uh, where do I get artifact X. Uh, artifact X, uh, I assume are you know, the various artifacts. Uh, well, you explore, uh, right? We've got the artifacts hidden throughout the various content in our game. Uh, obviously, this will also, if you're, you know, want to speed it up, I'm sure someone will write an online guide. But the idea is here that they're sprinkled through the various parts of our content. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot in Expeditions. At the end of the Elysian Wilds MSQ, there's one. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my list here. Oh, named enemies throughout the world, especially in Brimstone and Elysian Wilds Habit. Uh, the reward track has two of them, both in the free track. Uh, also, I saw a couple of questions like, what if I don't play this season? How can I get it later on? We will add the two artifacts that are in the reward track to the general pools in season four. So you won't miss out on that. Uh, Corrupted portals have a one or two. Uh, and last but not least, the PVP reward track has a number of them. Uh, another option for PvP players to, to really get that 700 gear score because all artifacts are uh, 700 gear score. Okay. Why did you get rid of the mandatory resilient perk for PvP and replace it with enchanted ward and health perk? So, I mean, our goal here is not to have mandatory perks. Uh, if we find one is too strong, we will definitely start looking at that. We'll try to bump up other ones. I think even something like health, which I agree, you know, especially on armor, our pool was a little more limited. That one will, is relatively close to mandatory. At least there, what's nice is it's not just for PvE or PvP. It, it'll be useful on both sets of gear. So it sort of brings the gear together. Uh, but short answer is, you know, we are going to continue to look at perks. Our goal is not to have one that clearly outshines others. All right. And coming to us from the creator program, Bear79 asks, can we get more clarification on the system of umbral shards and current named 590 plus items? Yeah, so 590 items uh, can be upgraded to 625 before the expansion. So if you've got 590 items, uh, I suggest you do that now. Uh, post the expansion, umbral shards are gone. You will no longer be able to upgrade with them. Uh, they will convert into gold. Uh, but the good news is here that those named items that you were getting at 590 will always drop at 625 moving forward. So uh, you won't ever have to upgrade them moving forward if you get them because it'll always be at 625. Okay, that's it. Well, thanks for joining us today on Balance of Power. Uh, I do have a community question. Uh, we're interested, what do you think is the most powerful or what is your favorite artifact coming up uh, in season three? Uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show today. If you did, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in a tournament. The chameleons are really a standout for me. Yeah, they're very fun. Yeah, and they're very chameleon-y. They actually disappear. Yeah.